<laughs> hey, troops. Yo, he's taping, so you're gonna have to whisper and use your your office voice. I don't know. Anyway, higher education, um, for me, the reason it's called higher, um, they might call it elitist, but for me it means higher levels of critical thinking. And so if at the basics you're thought to know and comprehend, which is what pretty much happens K through 12, um, and if you get beyond that and you're not memorizing and you've learned the basics, the groundwork, then you can start doing higher education, which is um, analyze, uh, uh, synthesize, that's my highest. That's what I spend most of my time teaching students to do. Uh, so, uh, what's the uh, one thing you're gonna miss about uh, teaching? Lower voices. Um, the what I'm going to miss the most yeah. in retirement. I think the community that gets built in the way that I teach, if I do it right, then you guys fire me. It's like you guys, they're all on task right now. They're all being loud, they're all switching with each other, they're up, up at the front of the classroom. What you have noticed, the thing where you said to me it's student-centered learning, especially in the video game class, that's the part that I enjoy seeing, is when I get off the stage, then the learning continues. And so then I've done what it is that I'm supposed to do. And so um, that, uh, that's satisfying. I hate grading because it it's like I can see that the people have learned but the the nitpicking line by line crap especially when I'm reading it for the third time is like you know it it's, it's very um, yeah it's mind-numbing and and it's part of that thing that we're starting to see with all human beings is we've evolved to be standing on two legs and now we're hunched over a screen. And it's not good for our eyes, it's not good for our shoulders. I now have five pairs of, of glasses with five different um, prescriptions. And so it's like, uh, that's one of the things I would like about transhumanism is get me eye, eyeballs that work so I can get rid of all these glasses, you know. So. Can you uh, talk a little bit about the video game class? Um, I invented it 10 years ago. I created it and presented it as a potential class because you have to get permission from your department and your division. And it was really funny because their first reaction was, well, and you know the content of that class having taken it. They said, shouldn't the uh, computer information systems, computer science yeah. people, be teaching this and I looked at them and said you want them teaching gender roles um, what it means to be human you know and I started making the list and they're like uh, no I said well how did you think the algorithms were gonna build narrative you know I mean and they just said Angie go do it and because um, I practically unrolled a list of references so I had covered my academic ass and uh, and the reason I did it is that in my 101 classes, sometimes students would choose to argue about violent video games. And I tended to agree with them. And then I thought, Angie, you teach critical thinking. You can't make a, an argument about video games. You've never played one. And so I went out and got evidence. And so then I got hooked and said, this is, this is not a game like Monopoly. This is the newest form of the novel. And it simply escaped from the pages of a book onto the screen. It's it. Eventually, the English department accepted film. Yep. And now, with some resistance, they're accepting video games. So it's just evolution. Uh, what do you think is one of the best qualities Thailand has to offer? Um, I think the single best thing they have to offer is diversity. And the reason why is that students, white students here are a minority. They're forced to deal with students every day. If we want to stop all these stupid mass shootings that are happening and maybe even wars, this is how you do it. You turn people of other cultures, other religions, instead of being the other, like the monster in our video game class, they become, oh, that's that person who sits next to me who has two kids. And then they cease to be the monster. Um, the second best thing that Highline does is that here, teaching comes first. We don't have to publish or perish. 
Um, and so we do have published writers on campus, a fair number of them. I'm not one, because teaching is my priority, my number one priority. And the book I wrote is on my website as a PDF just for my students to read. I don't really care if it gets published, other than there. And uh, Highline has small classes. Um, the teachers are super committed to what they're doing. Um, and they aren't like at the university in front of 900 students. Um, so you get a lot of hands-on kind of um, assistance. Well, thank you, Andrea. You're welcome. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you. A pleasure. I'm glad you were in class. Yeah.